Now let's talk about everybody's favorite topic when it comes to TCPIP. That is subnetting and supernetting. Now I'm going to give you the basics on these two topics. But understand this is pretty deep. You can find, you know, three, four hundred page books just on subnetting alone. So I want to just tell you what they are. If you're not familiar with these, make sure you understand the basics. Go out and look at a couple of examples. I'm going to show you an animated example here that will help. But subnetting and supernetting are very confusing. When I teach this in live classes, it's not unusual for, you know, say 40% of the class to get it the first time you go through it and you draw it out on a whiteboard. And then the 60% that didn't get it start asking all kinds of questions and they're totally confused. So you go back through it and maybe half of that 60% that didn't get it now gets it, but you lost half of the original 40% that did get it. And so it'll just kind of bounce back and forth until finally the light will come on for everyone. But it always takes four or five examples or explanations and then it brings up more questions. And it's always like a half a day in a live classroom to get this stuff down. So I'm going to present it to you here in, I don't know, four or five minutes and give you just enough to whet your appetite for this. Hopefully it helps you understand what's going on. You will see subnetting and supernetting mentioned on the exam, so I want to touch on it here. Now, what is subnetting? Well, subnetting is when we're going to use a portion of the host ID part of our IP address to create even more smaller networks. Now here's what happens. We get assigned a public IP address or we have an IP address that we can use. However, it gives us a larger network than what we need and we need smaller networks that we can segment with routers and have, you know, smaller subnets so that we can control traffic or security or whatever we're wanting to do. And subnetting is where we can take a single network, break it into smaller networks, and get that functionality. So this is where the term subnet comes from. Now let's start off with an IP address. We have an IP address that's been given to us of 131.107.16.200. Now if you look at that in binary, this is what it looks like. Okay, so the 131.107 is part of our network ID. So we have one network ID. The 16.200 is our host ID. And so we have 65,535 possible host IDs on the 131.107 network. Now don't hold me to my numbers because I'm leaving some things out here to keep from confusing you even more. I'm actually gonna lose two of those, but we won't get into that right now. So what I've been given here is really a class B address. Uh, we'll talk, you'll, you'll hear about class B's later, but uh, you've got a one network ID, 131.107, and then you've got 65,535. For example, our host ID here is 16.200. Well, we could have 17.200 and 18.200. And keep in mind, when we've got 16.200, that actually started at 16.1 and goes all the way to 16.255. Then it goes 17.0, actually, to 17.255, and on and on and on it goes. And again, part of those are reserved. You can't use them all, but don't worry about that right now. Well, what happens if we want more than one network and fewer hosts? We say, wait a minute, 65,535 people on one network segment is going to be a problem for us. So how can we bust this up into smaller networks? Well, we simply borrow bits to the right. If you'll notice right here, this used to be our network ID. And we're now saying, wait a minute, we're going to borrow three bits to the right. What will that do for us? And when you work this out in binary, Notice everything is shifted to the right. We no longer have one network, but we actually now can have four network IDs. And each one of these networks, instead of having 65,535 hosts, have roughly 8,200 hosts on each network. So now we have four networks with 8,191 hosts on each network. This is much better. And now we have subnetted our original network. Now, what is supernetting? Well, supernetting is where we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to use a portion of the network ID to create more hosts for a network. 
And this is also called Classless Internet Domain Routing, or CIDR. You will hear about it out there. And notice we're going to take the same IP address, looking at the binary. There's the network. There's the host. And so what we're going to do now is, with subnetting, we borrowed bits to the right. So when we started, our original network ID went over to here. And notice now we've borrowed back to the left one time. Well, that gives us more bits to use for our host IDs and fewer bits for our networks. Now, usually, and I don't want to go too deep here, but usually you will combine two networks and then start to borrow to the left for classless internet domain routing. But this is one of the tricks that helped us preserve some of the IP addresses out there on the public network for years. That's all I'm going to say about it in this video. Just understand that subnetting, we borrow to the right. It creates more networks. Supernetting, we basically borrow to the left. It creates fewer networks, more hosts. And if you've never seen this or done it, you may want to go out and read a little bit about it before the exam.